YouTubers, welcome back for another adventure. And what I'd like to continue with today is the hacked wire harness series. Do you have already in your hands what you need to bring one of these things back to life? What we did in the last video is we went through a bunch of junk wire harnesses and we came up with what was necessary to create a CDI system, right? Not everybody wants to go out and buy a boxed model. You could get the CDI kit in the box, right? They cost about 20 bucks, eBay. Some of, them, some of you guys want to recycle what you already own. So in this video, we're gonna sort through this junk and create a starting circuit. Make it so, push the button, and the starter goes round and round. So in addition to this pile of junk, one is gonna, I'm gonna add this push button and let me show you why. I don't know if you guys remember working on this 200, this TRX 200, but the, they have an add on button here for the uh, starter. And they always go bad on these things. So I added this little push button here. And it worked out so well, right? You just hit the button. It um, uses the same bolt that attaches all this. So that's, that's where I'm going to go with that. Um, leaving this out in the weather is not a good idea. Nor is that. So try not to do that. So what do we need to do this? I'm going to use the jump pack as a battery. I'm going to use that push button as a switch. Right, we have the wire harness here. I'd rather not cut wires. So I'm going to take a look through this mess. And I'm going to come up with a starting solenoid. And hopefully I'm going to come up with the jack that plugs into that. And we're going to hack it together and see if we can't create a starting circuit. Here is your starting solenoid in its simplest form. And believe it or not, it's the minimum of two circuits, if not three completely different circuits. The first circuit I like to think about is the high power one. Battery goes in one side, starter goes in the other. Well, it doesn't do you much good because how do you make it go? When you energize the coil here, right, which is a completely different circuit, you apply power to this from the push button, okay, on your uh, left hand side, right, you apply power to this, this relay clicks up, solenoid clicks up, shorts these two together, your starter goes around, engine starts, you let go of the button, relay goes back to place with the spring, power to your starter no longer. We're all happy. So the first thing we got to do is put a couple of wires on this thing for the starter and the battery. Now about this side, you got a black wire, you got a red wire. The black wire has to get to ground, but a lot of times they don't want your starter to engage unless you're in neutral. So when you shift your engine into neutral, there's a little switch inside that does two things. That black wire goes to ground, right? And at the same time it goes to ground, on your dashboard, you got one side of a light that's already hot from turning your key switch on, and the other side of the light goes to ground, right? Which completes the circuit, and your light lights up. So kind of two circuits in one so that gives you ground and once again the way you make this relay hot is when you push the button you get power there now your push button obviously doesn't send any power here unless your key switch is on and that black wire doesn't get to ground unless you're in neutral the circuit I'm about to show you kind of bypasses all that it's gonna go for this part of it, it's going to go from the battery <laughs> to the push button and back to here. So when I push the button, it's going directly to ground or it's going uh, directly to hot. This becomes hot 
and the starter's going to want to turn because that black wire, we're going to nail it straight to ground, right? We're going to attach it to ground. So your neutral switch will not work and your key switch will not work. If you push that button, the starter will go around. Obviously, on this all-terrain vehicle, the one I'm working on, there is no key switch. I just went into those details. So, first of all, you're aware. You can start in reverse. If your kid's playing with your all-terrain vehicle, if you take the keys out of it, he could still walk up to it and push the button, or she could walk up to it and push the button and grind the starter and kill your battery. So I'm just telling you guys for that reason. It'll also start in gear, right? No neutral, right? We got that bypassed. So given what we've just said, I went through the wire harness, and this is the starter side, and you can see it goes right into the jack. So I just have to plug that into the starter. That side goes to ground, right? And this side goes to the battery. I'm leaving this extra wire on here. So I don't want to tear it apart and quite honestly I may need it when I do some additional work if you guys want to see it I could do the voltage regulator side also and then quite honestly what I should do is just clean up the entire mess make a wire harness for it and make it go by the way when you're attaching wires to this do use the backing wrench do hang on to the lower bolt as you loosen or tighten these because you can spin them inside and uh, break this thing these are not exactly uh, <laughs> bulletproof um, you guys could see it's plastic and all so once again do be careful use your backing wrench and it'll save you uh, destroying a ten dollar solenoid we have it here in all its glory, right? One side of the solenoid to the starter, the second side to the battery, one side of the starting solenoid coil, or one side of the switch, one, one side of the switch to the battery, and the other side to the starting solenoid coil. And then you could see we have the other side of the starting solenoid coil directly hooked to ground. So with the jump pack on, right, if I just push this button, right, you could see round and round it goes. And quite honestly, with a little bracket, right, we could set this button up right here such that it's easy enough to push right from the handlebars. So, in a nutshell, <laughs> that's all there is to your starting solenoid. When it comes to troubleshooting, obviously you walk up to your on-terrain vehicle, you turn it on. Does the neutral light come on? Yes or no? If the neutral light comes on, you start making assumptions. They are not facts. You're making assumptions here. You assume at that point one side of your starting solenoid is grounded. You push the button. Right? If your starter goes around, all is good. Hopefully you have spark, your engine sound, you have gas, and it starts. But let's say you push your button. You got a green light and you hear your starting solenoid kind of clicking. Well, if it's kind of clicking and buzzing and your neutral light is kind of dimming as you're pushing it, you could assume your battery is probably weak. Once again, assumption, not absolute. Probably. You put a jump pack on it or you charge your battery up or you do all the above and you push your button. And once again, your starter's buzzing, your light is brighter, but just dims down but it's not going around now you got to start wondering is my starter dead from there and you guys see me do it you see the sparks a lot of times I take a junky screwdriver <laughs> right you don't do this with your your $25 snap-on screwdrivers and you try to short these two together if you do that and your engine goes around your starting solenoid is probably bad. 
if you do that and your starters kind of you hear actually your starter kind of click and groan you didn't do something like seize your engine up did you you gotta ask that question so there you go through it once again, you go into neutral, no neutral light, but you're sure it's in neutral. You're sure your battery's good because when you pop it in reverse, the reverse works. Now you got to start wondering, is the engine neutral switch out or do you have a broken wire? On some all-terrain vehicles, that broken wire part is not all that surprising. Particularly, believe it or not, the 300EX, the Honda TRX 300EX, I've had a, a couple of those through here, and it appears as if somehow they like to lose the uh, neutral wire, right, the neutral side of it. And on some of them, quite honestly, um, one of them came through, it was already bypassed, and I'm like, why did they bypass that? Well, the neutral switch was bad. I think when they rebuilt the engine, they, they messed up the neutral switch. Um, you guys might ask why I came up with my own push button. On the China made wire harnesses here, the seam that the thing that seems to go first is the starter button, right? I guess that's no, I'm not sure what it is because that's the horn. Maybe that's the start. Yeah, that's probably the start. So normally that's the first thing to go bad. The second thing about it is. There's really no universal wiring or coating on here. So unless you want to spend quite a bit of time trying to figure out which wire should be hot and which one should be ground from the starter, it's kind of, you know, a lot of work. You could take the whole thing apart and figure it out that way also. But anyway, I just thought it was neater putting a clean little little button here. You know, you can actually go further um, I'm not sure how many wires you want to run up here, but you can put an LED up there, up here, so that when it's on, the LED's lit. You could put a on and off switch, which would be the equivalent of your key switch. You turn it on, you see the LED come on, and then you push the button, and you could actually watch the engine go around. I mean, it's tempting to do that, right? Kind of put all your controls in one place looks like it would work pretty well here it is something that's tempting I don't know I gotta see how I feel maybe I'll uh, <laughs> left hand side thumb uh, dashboard I guess we could call it so when I was uh, younger electronics was mostly what I would uh, work on Kind of came of age with the transistor <laughs> pre-integrated circuit though it seemed like five days after the transistor was invented people were putting more than one of them onto uh onto a piece of silicon and uh the integrated circuit came out oh, it seems like just days after the uh, transistor so for me, all this electronic stuff, especially the DC circuits, I've been playing with that since shortly after I can walk, right? Taking my toys apart, cutting the wires loose so I can put batteries directly to the motors and, and you know, use the remote control from one toy, hardwire it into another toy so that it would work, you know. Once again, there was no electronics, right? So I've been playing with this stuff forever. If you actually spend a few minutes looking at it, it's not all that difficult. Just remember, ground, <laughs> switch, load, hot, and you're good. All right, there we are. I'm done. Any questions, please ask. Uh, please remember to keep your feet down, your heads up, and uh, make sure you get out there and enjoy each and every day kind of cold out so I got to get back inside all right take care now bye